My name is Miguel Siqueira. I was a combat medic for the Army from 2007 all the way up to 2012. My name is Alana Duffy, and I served in the Army as a counterintelligence agent. My job was to make sure that the guys that I was rolling out with every day would come home in one piece. I'm Frank Ellis. I served from 1996 until October 2005. My dad was military, my brother, my grandfather, the whole Forrest Gump thing going out. The hardest thing to accept is that you couldn't walk away from war unscathed. The significance of those feelings, that anxiety, instead of being quiet, they get louder and louder and louder. In 2008, my daughter was born, so she knows about PTSD. She knows I'm not like other people's dads, where I'm not gonna be able to go out into a crowded gym, go to a baseball game. I was medically retired. I hadn't wanted to get out. I had planned on staying in for a career. So to me, it was basically just ripped away. They were like, good luck. My wife knows when stuff's bothering me because I get mean, snippy. That's when she says, you know, why don't you go to the horse or take your dog out or something. It was really hard to come back. I don't know where I fit. I don't know where I belong. I'd had some really bad experiences with mental health care in the Army. A lot of my friends have committed suicide. I think I lost 11 people in one month. I never expected to find people that I cared for so much, which eventually also led to me feeling so guilty for not having been able to save some of the people that I lost. Six years ago, I didn't have a house. You know, my wife and my kid and I were all struggling. You know, sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down. Lately, the ups have been more than the downs. Yet another reason of why I stopped complaining about mental health, physical health, all of that. People will latch onto it. You don't want to be seen as weak. If you would have asked me two or three years ago, I don't know if I would have told you that I would have been successful. I was in a really tough spot where I couldn't see a month or two out. I did make it home, and I have my arms and legs, my sight, and I think that's one of the bigger problems with people getting into help is they might know they need help, but they think someone else needs it more. When I take a step back and, and look at what I used to feel like and what I feel like now, the more that people understand that you know mental health isn't such a scary or taboo thing, it's just going to open doors for everyone else who might feel alone or afraid that something might be wrong with them and only them, and it's just not true. Thank you.